So how do we save the world from robots? Well, as a kid, I had a plan, and that plan involved my succession of Batman. I planned to be Batman. I know we all love superheroes, and there would be some in this room that say perhaps Iron Man is better or Spider-Man is better, but I'm here to tell you that Batman is better. He's the only answer, in fact, and that was my plan. I, I actually had the outfit when I was a kid. I was like nine years old, and the whole getup, except for the boots, um, I had to innovate a little bit. I used rubber boots. They were easy to slip on, real efficient. Um, I, the only problem was that I, I didn't have the official cape. I had the sort of like rip-off outfit where the cape was in your armpit, so you had to go like this to show that you even had one. So I struggled with the confidence of being a superhero, but also the humiliation of not having the proper cape. I also eventually grew up a little bit, went from the age of eight to the age of nine, and began to dream a little bit differently. I actually had a, a recurring dream when I was nine, and it was terrifying. It was a scary dream. Um, at the time, in my dream, it, I think it was a little bit further ahead. I, I know it was just back to the future day. It was in the future. So we had a robot as a family. And uh, this was a household robot, and its purpose was to help us. Its purpose was to do the chores that I hated as a young person. Its purpose was to clean the house and help my mom, who was already great at those things, but I mean, I always want my mom to have a helping hand and I didn't like doing chores, so uh, it made sense to have a robot. So we had this robot and in my dream, my parents went out on a date because they're in love and they're amazing and they do fun things together. And I, being the oldest, was left to take care of my brother and sister who were younger than me. So in my dream, my parents leave, I'm in charge, superhero again, and Instantly, as soon as they leave the house and the door locks and they get in the car and drive away, something changes in the robot. The robot looks at me with death in its eyes. And all of a sudden, its mission, rather than doing chores, is to kill me and my brother and sister. Scary, I know, it was terrifying. So I frantically ran around the house trying to hide my brother and sister, protect them first. So finally I got them uh, hidden away where the robot couldn't find them and now I had to figure out how to fix the robot or at least stop it from killing me. So I came across this rope while running around my house screaming and I figured in my dream, I n you know you don't really think clearly in some of your dreams, so I figured in my dream I'm going to use this rope to somehow stop the robot. So the problem with that is that there was a, a knot in the rope and also in my dream I believed that if I didn't get the knot out of the rope I couldn't use the rope to stop the robot. So I was frantically again running around the house being like, how the heck do I get this knot out? I just trimmed my nails because my mom told me to. And now she's gone. She can't help me. And I get cornered in the hall. And I am freaking out trying to get this thing undone so I can, I don't know, somehow set a booby trap or like whip it with the rope or something, anything to help. And as the robot just cruises towards me, I wake up. Every single time I had this dream, I'd wake up right as the robot lunged at me in a cold sweat, feeling sick to my stomach. How many people have had a dream and woken up actually believing it was true and feeling sick to your stomach to the point that it can, e it can even wreck your day? You can carry it with you even into the next day or even into that night when you're dreaming again. That happened to me. So that's science, actually. Brain scans show that the chemical impact of imagining or dreaming something is the same as actually physically doing something in real life. It's true, you can Google it, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's science. And that's what I wanna talk about today is the power of imagination. I had a dream again uh, in grade 10 and I wasn't sleeping, I was in a math class and uh, I didn't really care about math. I mean, I was pretty good at it. And maybe that's why I didn't care about it, because I was done the homework and I was just kind of bored. So I was daydreaming in class, and I love daydreaming. But during this specific class, a few classes ago, we had just learned about magnets and how the same poles repel each other. So I was thinking about magnets, and I was also really into cars at the time. I was planning on uh, purchasing a, a Ford Mustang eventually, one of the older ones, not the new ones. Um, so I was daydreaming about cars and magnets, and then all of a sudden I realized what if we used those same poles that repel each other and trap them in a tube and actually use them as suspension? And, and since we're using a vehicle, we could actually charge it from the engine and it could be an electromagnet and we could actually change 
how stiff that suspension is. So in our rough Canadian winters, we can make the suspension a little more loose for the rough roads. Or when we hit the highway, and if you have a heavy foot like me, you need that tighter suspension so that you don't crash. So I was daydreaming this, and I brought this to my teacher at the end of class and told her everything, so excited. She looked at me and laughed, said, Mike, you have a great imagination, but are you done your homework? And my heart sunk in that moment. And that was probably the right thing for her to say as my teacher, but I was done the homework. And at that moment, I wanted to create electromagnetic suspension for vehicles. <laughs> so to an extent, I think this is an example of the state of our education system today. Is it useful? In many ways, yes. Does it get the job done? Probably. But there's a lot of focus on homework and testing and categorizing where often I think it could be better to stimulate young minds and imaginations and give them the opportunity to invent and create and innovate. But many people view child, er, imagination as a childish profession, sometimes also our teachers. But there's, to them, there's a point that we all must grow up and be realistic and start caring more about algorithms and bubbling charts than we do about the daydreams of our youth. So the same is true often in enterprise. And that's sad. I live in the world of enterprise, and imagination is often overlooked. But Einstein himself said that imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited to everything we know now, everything we understand now. But imagination embraces the entire world and everything that we will ever know or understand. I want to imagine. So there comes a time when we're told that we need to grow up. We need to start being realistic. We need to go through university and begin our entry-level corporate position and check off the boxes and move our way up and um, get a leg up on the right people and then also say the right things to the right people. But I think we need to look at it a little differently. And in 2013, with my business partner, Taylor, I decided to take that risk, and I stepped out of the corporate world. I started a company that I believed would accomplish what I always wanted to accomplish. I believed that it would give me the opportunity, the platform, to do things in a special way, different than the, the formula that had been prescribed by my culture. And this could be disappointing to my teachers or my parents or my boss at the time, but it was the way I wanted to do it. And like you've heard today, we only live once. We only die once. So how are we going to choose to live? So that was my choice. And ever since then, I've had the opportunity to work with people, to work with entrepreneurs and startups in the marketing world, because that's what my company does. But it's more than marketing. It's more than advertising. We sit across from people every day on our couch in our office and talk about what it is that they want to accomplish, what it is that they've always dreamed about. Because every one of those people has quit what they were doing before, the monotony, the routine, for a dream. But the harsh reality is that stepping into that lonely entrepreneurial world of cash flow statements and needing to pay yourself and take care of your family and then figure out how to hire employees and then still provide a service and go somewhere specific with your business, it's a harsh reality. It's a cold place to hang your hat. But we get to sit across from people and bring the dream back into it for them, pull them out of survival mode. We get to ask them the right questions and see them rediscover purpose in a moment. It's incredible. And that's the power of imagination because purpose is something that we all seek. It's at the core of our motivations. It's that thing that gets us up in the morning and it's where our minds go at night, right before we fall asleep. Or even in the afternoon, after we've eaten a noodle bowl from our favorite Vietnamese restaurant and we're just overdosed on MSG. <laughs> it's where our minds go. Every opportunity they get when they're not bombarded with the templates that we subscribe to or the formulas that have been made by some other man before us. And yes, these things work well. They've worked before. They are right but they're not enough. And we're, in, we're at risk of becoming all too robotic in the way that we do life if we just subscribe to the way someone else did it before. So this is my challenge to myself and to us as TEDx Saskatoon. 
Do we want to live in a, a world of robots or of human possibilities? We have an opportunity today to choose, to choose whether we will live in a, a world of process primarily or a world of purpose primarily. But I see too many people all around me, whether it's here, North America, or around the world, that are giving up purpose for process because it's safer, because it's easier, it's simpler. There's less steps, there's less mistakes, but we in our humanity were born to risk. We were born to dream. We were born to actually fail and then begin again. But we are at risk of missing out on those things that were always meant to be sensational in our lives. So we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity today to step away from the machine that has led us for so long. Just like in every good sci-fi movie or story, the robot eventually turns against us. So will we allow that robot in our, that opportunistic template or process to take our humanity, or will we step away from that, see the opportunity? So I have a question. Will you dream with me? Will you imagine with me? The beautiful thing about this is that imagination as a faculty of the mind is not something that's reserved for the elite or some special group. It's something that we all possess. It's an opportunity that we all have. So how do we save the world from robots? Imagination establishes the destination. We have but to arrive. Thank you.